right, we're talking about section 6.4, area and circumference today. Let's dive right in. Our objectives, we want to be able to use area formulas to compute areas of polygons, and we're also going to do uh, formulas for circumference and area of a circle. Okay, so the area of a rectangle and a square. So rectangles are easy. Remember, they have 90 degree angles in all four corners. And so do squares. What's the difference? Well, in a rectangle, the length and width do not have to be the same. In a square, you've got four right angles and four sides that are the same length. And so if we have a formula for area of a rectangle, length times width, the square is easy because the length and the width are the same, so we get area equals s squared. I'm going to use these in the next example. So let's say we have a path that we want to create. And that path needs to be three feet wide all the way from the start to the end. Um, I want to find the area of this path, and then I'm going to cover that path with bricks that take four bricks for every square foot. So I'm going to chop this path up just a little bit, and there's different ways of chopping it. I could chop it here and just use two rectangles, or I can chop it into three pieces and have a three by 13 rectangle here, and three times 13 is 39 square feet. So that little rectangle has an area of 39. Once I've done right angle here, this is a little three by three, because I've got a three here and a three here, right? That's a little square. So that one's nine square feet. And then I have a third rectangle right here that is 6 by 3. 6 times 3 is 18, so the area of that one is 18 square feet, right? So the total area of my path, and like I said, we can split it up a little differently. This is kind of a nice way to do it. Total area of the path is going to be 39 plus 9 plus 18. We'll get, grab a calculator, and that makes our area... Um, Let's do the math really quick. 66 square feet. Okay. Now, if the path requires four bricks for every square foot, that would mean to find the number of bricks, I need to do 66 times 4. And that would give us 66 times 4. Let's grab a calculator, do the math. That's 264 bricks. There we go off to Home Depot to buy our bricks for that path. Those are the kind of calculations you'll need to do when you start doing landscaping in your yard. Okay, so the area of a parallelogram. Um, so a parallelogram is like a rectangle that's been kind of pushed a little sideways. Uh, area of that is going to be base times the height. Now, what do we mean by the base. The base is one of the sides, and the height has to be measured perpendicular to that base. More than that, it has to be the distance between those two opposite sides. Distance between a pair of those parallel sides. Okay? Area is base times height. Notice the height is not the length of one of the sides. Why does it work? Because if we take this little triangle and we cut it off and we move it to the other side, we have a rectangle. Okay, that's the reason the formula works, but notice the height is not one of the sides of the parallelogram. It's the distance between a pair of my parallel sides. Okay, so example three, using a formula for a parallelogram's area. To find the area of this parallelogram, they have everything marked that we need, so we use 8 as the base. Notice they have a right angle marked, and we're calculating the distance between those sides, so the height is 4 centimeters. That would make the area 8 times 4, or 32 square centimeters. Remember, area is in square units because we're doing 8 centimeters times 4 centimeters. Centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. All right, let's do triangles. So the area of a triangle. So we have a triangle with four, three vertices. Shouldn't have four if it's a triangle. So we've got three vertices. Um, 
we choose this as the base of our triangle, then the height is measured from that vertex that's opposite that side, creating a right angle. So it's a distance from the vertex to that opposite side. That's the height of our triangle, it's also known as the altitude. The area of the triangle is one half base times height. So this is a formula we're gonna to wanna to remember. And the reason it works is because if we had a parallelogram, these two would be the same size, area is base times height. I only have half of that parallelogram, but that's the reason the formula works. All right, so one half the base times the height, that's the area of a triangle. So let's go ahead and do an example or two with using that formula. So when I have this picture right here, Notice where the 10 is. It's perpendicular to the 16. So if I use 16 as my base, 10 will be the height. So we have 1 half the base, which is 16, times the height, which is 10. You have to use the 16, not the 11.8 or the 14, because that height is perpendicular to that side of the triangle, right? Okay, so area is one half the base times the height. So we got eight times 10 or 80. Half of 16 is eight, eight times 10 is 80. And we're gonna make that meter squared. Okay, now let's look at one that's a little funny looking. Um, sometimes you calculate the height a little differently. I mean, it's perpendicular to what you've chosen as the base, but the base has to be extended in order to drop that perpendicular, to drop that height. So um, sometimes you have to extend it. So we're going to use the 12 as the base, the 9 as the height. Notice where that vertex is. It's opposite that side. Okay, so the area is going to be 1 half 12 times 9 Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 9 is 54. So we have 54 square inches. All right. And that's the area of our triangle. Now we could, if we had the measurements, we could have done, if I use the 25.6 as my base and I drew a perpendicular from there, I could use that as my height. But I don't have that measurement, so I can't use that. But if we could measure that, we could use it and do it that way. All right, let's go on. Area of a trapezoid. Okay, so the area of a trapezoid. A trapezoid, remember, has one pair of parallel sides. Those sides are called the bases. So the A and the B label the length of the two bases. And the formula that we have is area equals one half the height times the sum of the bases. And they show us why. If we calculate the area of this little kind of gold colored triangle, it's one half times A times H. Base is A, the height is H. And then if we calculate the area of this little salmon colored triangle, they call it red, doesn't look red, but that little triangle, that's also one half the base, but the base is B for this one. The height is the same. Then we factor out the 1 half h, we have the formula that we all know and love for the area of a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is 1 half times the height, which is the distance between the two parallel sides, and then the sum of the bases, which are the lengths of the parallel sides. All right, so we're going to do example 5, where we find the area of a trapezoid. So we have a lovely picture drawn. Um, the two sides that are parallel are here and here, so I need those two lengths, the 32 and the 46. Those are the bases of the trapezoid. And the 13 is the height. This is our height. So we're going to do area equals one half of the height times the sum of the bases, but those are the parallel sides of the trapezoid. So I don't need the 13.4 and the 17. I just need the 32 and the 46 and the 13. 32 plus 46 is 78, or we can just type it all into the calculator. We're going to do 1 half, which is 0.5 if you want to do it that way, 
times 13 times 78, and we get 507. We're going to label the units on that. That's going to be square feet, not feet, square feet. So 507 square feet for our area of our trapezoid. Okay, let's talk circles. Circle is a set of points in the plane that are equally distant from a given point called the center. So if we have this as our center, and we have a specific distance from that center, and we keep that distance the same, we get a circle. All right, let me redraw it just a little bit here. Kind of lost it there. So if we take that center and we go to any point on the circle, those distances are the same. That's known as the radius of the circle, plural is radii. And I could pick any other point on the circle, and that distance has to be the same. Equidistant, equally distant. Um, another piece of vocabulary that we need is if we go, let's say we have a circle right here. Oops, that's not a very good circle. If we go from through the center, and we have this line segment that has its endpoints on the circle, okay? This is known as a diameter. And the diameter, notice, is twice the radius, two times the radius, because I have a radius here and a radius here. So we get all the way across, and we have 2r. So the diameter is always twice the radius, or the radius is always half of the diameter. We'll need that in some problems. Okay, finding the distance around a circle. So the distance around the circle is known as the circumference. It's like the perimeter of the circle. Um, the circle has a diameter d, then the circumference is pi times d. And if the radius is r, it's 2 pi r for the circumference. Just replace the diameter with 2 r and you've got it. So let's say we have a circle, look at example 6, circle with a circumference of 40 r, or sorry, circle with a diameter of 40 yards, another label. 40 yards is the diameter. Notice how the 40 sits right above the center. That means it's 40 yards all the way across. All right, so diameter is 40 yards. That would mean the circumference C is going to be 40 times pi, which is diameter times pi. Let's find the pi button on the calculator and do the math here. So 40. And then pi is right here above the that key. But notice right now I didn't push the second function, so I'm going to have to delete that. Let me just clear it and start over. That might be easiest. So I've got 40, and then I do second function to get the pi. So there's 40 pi. Push enter, and I have it, 125.66. We'll just do it that far. So it's 125.66 yards. Okay, and then just pay attention on your math Excel assignment to see how, how you need to round. They usually tell you. All right, last example. Finding the area of a circle to find out which pizza is a better buy. Oh, we need a formula for area. We don't have that yet. So in a circle, the area is a equals pi r squared. So pi times the square of the radius. And we're going to use this to solve a problem. So we went to get pizza, and we want to know which is the better buy. A large pizza with a 16-inch diameter for $15, or a medium pizza with an 8-inch diameter for $7.50. The better buy is going to be the pizza that has a lower price per square inch. So we're going to calculate price per square inch. All right, so notice what they did first. They tell us that the radius of the large pizza is 8. So the diameter is 16. That would mean the radius is 8. And the radius of the medium pizza is 4, because half of 8 is 4. So we're going to calculate the area of the large pizza. So we're going to do area equals pi times 8 squared, or 64 pi. And I'm just going to leave it as 64 pi here. All right, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it as 64 pi. You could come up with a, a number for that. I'm just going to leave it as 64 pi for now. Uh, that would mean the cost per square inch 
is going to be, um, what will I do to get the cost per square inch? I will take the, I need per square inch, that puts the square inches in the denominator. So cost per square inch, I need to do 15 and divide by 64 pi. And that will give me the cost per square inch. Let me show you how to do that on the calculator. Um, on the calculator, we're going to do this in just a second. You're going to type it in as 15 divided by 64 pi, complete with the parentheses, because you've got to make it do the multiplying before it does the dividing. If you type it in like this without the parentheses, you're going to divide 15 by 64 and then multiply by pi. That's not what I want, so don't type it in that way. So let's type it in the right way. Let me make sure I get this written down where you can read it. 64 pi. So let's go to my calculator. And I'm going to clear that off. And I'm going to do 15 divided by, notice the keys are showing up in red as I push them. Parentheses 64 and pi. I have to do a second function and that key to get the pi. And watch your screen. Make sure you're getting the right stuff. And then if I push enter, it's about seven cents per square inch. I'll have to carry it out to, let's say, four decimal places. 0 0.0746. And that's dollars per square inch. So about seven cents per square inch. Okay. Now, we're going to do the other one. So think about how we're going to do the other one. On the medium pizza, the area is going to be pi times 4 squared, or 16 pi. We're going to calculate the cost per square inch by doing 7.5 or 7.50, same thing, divided by 16 pi. Once again, remember how to do it on the calculator. Um, I should probably use little squiggles to indicate I've rounded this off. And I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm going to do 7.5 divided by, use those parentheses, 16 pi. And we have 0 0.1492. 0 0.1492 dollars per square inch which mean the better buy is the large pizza. And that is the end of our video.